All right, y'all, we are back with another video and say it ain't so. Once again, I do want to say shout out to Speaker Mike Johnson. Ever since this man been in office, he been getting stuff done. And the left do not like it at all. So I want to go ahead and say salute to him. And if y'all been seeing that, Mike Johnson has been going off on Joe Biden and Mallorca's, especially over this border situation with all these illegal immigrants coming across the border. Speaker Mike Johnson has not been holding back at all. He has been going off and he ain't playing around. So once again, shout out to him. This one right here is coming from Doug. Now this video is 39 minutes. And uh, and like I said before, I definitely want to hear about this because I definitely want to hear what Mike Johnson has to say about this whole situation. So hopefully a lot of you that's watching, watch the entire video with me and stuff. I really, really appreciate it. So more people can see my reaction and that right there is where to help the channel grow. So I appreciate everybody who always watches until the end. And make sure you hit that like button because that's very, very important as well. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive straight into this. But like I said, I will leave the original video in the description. Make sure y'all go show Doug some love because he said that the Democrats were just broken by Mike Johnson. Says Speaker Mike Johnson ends Biden and Mayorkas on the border in 39 minutes. Without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, dive straight into it. Like I said, please hit that like button for me, y'all. And uh, let's go. <laughs> Look at Doug. <laughs> Doug, why are you wearing the battle armor? The American <laughs> kaiju, the most powerful battle armor in the world. It's because we're being invaded. Yep. Mike Johnson uh, gives his first official speech as Speaker of the House, and it is a barn burner. This yeah. video, it's like over 20 minutes long. I chopped it up a little bit, edited it down a little bit, but it's about the southern border. We have a catastrophe at our southern border. We do. It is because the border has been deliberately opened wide that we see the, the terrific horrors that are taking place across our country right now. Here's a short list. From Texas to New York, waves of illegal immigrants are now overwhelming our communities. Why they're impeaching Mayorkas, why we are at war with Mayorkas, why we are at war with our own president because he will not defend the southern border. He's letting in criminals. They're giving away your vittles, your rights to your retirement to illegals. They're, take, they're kicking out veterans who served in Korea to house more young illegals. They're taking over your schools, your taxes pay for, and they're giving it the room to illegals. They're taking away black uh, gang shelters and help houses and they're kicking them out, the poor blacks, African-Americans, and they're putting in illegals. That's crazy. In war. Put on your battle armor, guys. Here we go. Welcome to Doug in Exile. Just since the time I was elected speaker, less than 100 days ago, more than 700,000 illegals have been welcomed into our country illegally yep. by the Biden administration. Mm -hmm. American school children have been forced into virtual schools. Why? So migrants can sleep in their school buildings. Korean war veterans of the U.S. have been booted from nursing homes that were sold to house migrants. Our streets are being flooded with fentanyl. Hundreds of thousands of children and adults are being poisoned and losing their lives. Vulnerable children and women are being exploited and trafficked by cartels, and that's happening even within our borders. I just want to I just want everyone to know anyone who voted for Biden, anyone who says they will not vote for Trump, there is zero desire on your side to close up the border or build a wall. Yeah. So at the very least, if all of America ends because of the illegals that we are bringing over an unprecedented number and maybe there's some kind of a civil war going to happen because they want the blacks and Hispanics at war. They want America's black poor and Hispanic poor at war war conducted by white guys like Joe Biden and by Mayorkas that y'all support, Democrats support. I'm only telling you, if you want to know why they brought up Department of Equity and Inclusion, the Black Lives My, uh, Matter riots, why they pretend to foment up the blacks and then cut them out when it comes to giving out benefits. They give all the benefits 
to largely Hispanic illegals coming over the border. They want you guys to get in a fight over scrap. And while the Senate and the White House were negotiating a so-called border security deal, one Border Patrol official compared the situation this way. He said, what we're being asked to do right now, this is a 33-year veteran of the Border Patrol, a high-ranking official in, in the agency. He said, what we're being asked to do right now is administer an open fire hydrant. He said, please convey to our friends in Washington, we don't need more buckets. We, we need to turn off the flow. And his metaphor explains the situation perfectly. So this is like prison. Look, my friend went to prison. Mm -hmm. And the prison's broken up into whites, blacks, and Hispanics. Simple. And they want them all fighting each other. Do not vote for this party, these people, because Biden and Mayorkas are evil. Maybe they're stupid evil. Maybe they're so dumb they do the evil things are done. Maybe there's a puppet that a demon moves around, but they're that bad. They is Since bad. President Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas assumed office, there have been more than 7 million encounters with illegal aliens just at our southern border alone. 35 of our 50 states, including my home state of Louisiana, don't have a population that large. Yet that's how many people have been apprehended in just the past three years. To my seniors, hmm. they're taking away your retirement homes to house Ill illegal migrants. And they do it in public. No one's questioning them. Because... And Morning Joe and MSNBC covers for them. The media for three years would not show the crisis on our border of people pouring over. They're covering it up. They're going, you can't see the truth. It's too traumatic. It's too hard to watch people going across a river being carried. Among those who've been apprehended on the southern border, but between ports of entry, mm -hmm. more than 300 individuals who are on our terror watch list. Terrorist watch list. The, the frightening question is, if so many terrorists were caught attempting to cross our borders, how many have entered undetected? We suspect That's it is a question. much higher number. It is. And we know that there are at least 1.8 million gotaways that we know have escaped uh, CBP. Who knows what dangerous plans those gotaways are making and, and, and what foreign adversaries they may be speaking with. Republicans have been trying to sound an alarm, but the elites at all these institutions, including social media, will not allow the message to get to you. They just label it too disturbing, too disturbing. Understand the situation at our border presents a clear and present danger to our national security and it demands that it be addressed. Even officials within the executive branch are saying so. FBI Director Christopher Wray told the Homeland Security Committee just in November, that these gotaways are a great concern for the agency and that all 56 of our joint terrorism task forces are trying to identify who these people are. While we don't know how many terrorists are inside our borders, it's an unknowable number. We don't know. We do know that fentanyl is pouring into our communities like an open sewer. Right. Right now, the leading cause of death, the leading cause of death in America for Americans age 18 to 46 is fentanyl poisoning. And fentanyl seizures have increased two and a half times since President Biden took office. That's just the seizures. The rest of it flows right in. But even as some of it is seized, we know much more is making its way into our schools and our neighborhoods and virtually every community in America. Ah, the pro-woman party is selling off babies and women to cartels in unprecedented number. Whoa. This is way far beyond what you get in the, in the general population. The Democrats are trafficking women their policies create more just a quick snapshot of my state in new orleans in my home state 95 percent of the drug overdoses in new orleans are caused by fentanyl 95 percent wow that's a high we number. see that this poison is ripping families apart look we're going to do some comparisons here okay because one of them that i want you to make immediately remember what democrats say about gun companies uh, manufacturers of bullets and guns they're saying you're responsible for what people freely do. And I'm only saying that if in any way they believe in that, they don't believe it, um, that people are responsible for what they allow, then at the very least, what you have allowed and you have engaged, you are directly 100% responsible and accountable for every one of these women and children, babies being trafficked into you know what. You did that. You go to jail. They're not going to do it. They don't believe it at all. 
That leads the American people to ask a very important question. Mm -hmm. And it is one that we've been asking on this side of the aisle for a long, long time. Where in the world is Secretary Mayorkas on all of this? Nowhere to be found. He is found. the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. It's his responsibility yep. to prevent these harmful drugs from flowing into our country and to mm -hmm. secure that border. And he's done nothing of the sort. Nope. And as we've heard from Border Patrol agents, he's doing exactly the opposite. He's, he's handicapping law enforcement. He's limiting their ability to catch narcotics like fentanyl. He's making it virtually impossible. They say in their own words, and they told us down on the border at Eagle Pass, it's impossible to do the job that they were trained to do. Perhaps the secretary is busy identifying more people on, on the list that he can release on parole. Because just since fiscal year 2022, Secretary Mayorkas has released, released into the country more than 1.5 million aliens just sent them out into the country on what they call parole. Hmm. Remember, the Immigration and Nationality Act states very clearly that parole should only be used on a case-by-case -case basis and a temporary basis. But millions of illegals right now are being granted parole and spending many years in the United States before they're ever even expected to appear before a judge. Some of them are given a, a piece of paper that says, we'll see you in a decade. It's absurd. Same thing with blaming like Coke companies or McDonald's for the amount of calories you eat. They're like, you can't have super size. You can't have this much sugar in your Coke in New York. Uh, product bans like the gasoline. Remember, they're out trying to save you. They went after every tobacco company for creating and, and knowingly distributing poison. And now the Southern Dang. border is distributing fentanyl and killing more people, get this, than tobacco ever killed. So they have all these laws against showing smoking here on YouTube. But meanwhile, they all vote for people who bring in something much worse than smoking, fentanyl, into our communities and distribute it for cheap among the poor to slaughter them. That's your party. But uh, you won't change your vote. This mass parole is neither temporary nor selective. It is a clear violation of federal law, and it is dangerous, and it is subversive. And it's intentional. And to make matters worse, we've learned that the Biden administration is now simply just simply releasing 85 percent of the illegals who come across that border right into the country. They're coming to a neighborhood near you. For reference, by the way, if you're watching the metrics in 2013, the Obama administration, listen to this, the Obama administration detained 82 percent of illegal aliens. How do we go from detaining 82 percent to releasing 85 percent? It only happens if this is by design, it only happens if it's an orchestrated, intentional effort by the administration to do exactly that. And that is what the evidence shows. Yeah, this, uh, you can go up and you can stop this immediately. They can stop the flow. Trump did it. It wasn't hard. It didn't take a Herculean effort. It just took the will. They don't have the will. I don't know why they don't have the will. I don't know why they want open borders. I don't know they want why they want millions of people. John Adams famously said, Facts are stubborn things, and these are the facts, and you can't look away. This is only part of why Chairman Green and the House Homeland Security Committee marked up articles of impeachment last night. Uh -oh. They wrapped that up at about 1.15 this morning, uh -oh. and they did very important work for our country, and we will be moving forward swiftly on those articles. It's uh -oh. long overdue. But Secretary Mayorkas is only part of the problem, because earlier this month, I, I released a memo documenting 64, 64 specific actions that the Biden administration has taken to undermine our border security and to promote the mass release of illegals and dangerous persons into our country. 64 times, and here's just a, a couple of the many alarming actions, and this is all public, everybody can go see this. The day he took office, the very first day that he walked into the Oval Office, President Biden revoked Executive Order 9844. You know what that did? It ended construction of the border wall that Congress had already paid for. Everybody's seen the images on TV, the materials out there rotting in the sun and the, and the, the elements. Why? Because Joe Biden decided unilaterally he didn't want a wall. Maybe secretly <laughs> deep down inside, atheists oh, need to man. feel like they did something good with their works because they don't have Jesus to apply grace to their life. Maybe they have to always stay up at night and going, what did I do for the poor of the world? I feel so guilty being mostly Democrat, white, rich in America. I have too much. I got to redistribute this around the world and I have to get government to do it. So in February, 2021, 
The, the administration stopped applying Title 42 expulsions to children and incentivized, by doing that, incentivized families to send unaccompanied children through Mexico under the watch of who? Cartels and traffickers. Since then, the administration has lost track. They admit to this number, they admit that they've lost track of more than 80,000 unaccompanied children somewhere in the U.S. Mm. We were down there at Eagle Pass, at the Del Rio sector. We went through one of these processing centers. And, and what we saw down there was heartbreaking. It was infuriating. But you see these small children. They're unaccompanied minors. Some of them, of course, aren't even, uh, they can't even speak the language, obviously. They have interpreters there. But they, they don't even know who they are. I mean, these are young children. They don't know what their full names are, where they hail from, who their parents are. And, and they sit them there, and they ask questions, some preliminary questions. And if the children don't know it, you know what they do? Literally, they take a sticker, and they put it on the chest of the little child that says Jane Doe or John Doe. What? What happens to them after that? Well, we, they, Border Patrol says, gosh, we don't know. Our job is just to process them here. Well, they're released presumably into the hands of NGOs, non-governmental organizations, who are being refunded, by the way, by American taxpayers, who do something with the children, and then they just disappear. Well, we know 80,000 of them are missing. We don't know where they are. Have they been put into trafficking rings? We can only guess. I, I'm just trying to figure out the psychological reason why anyone would want to destroy their own country, destroy their own culture, right? take away money from their own delegates. You'd go find Democrats, they're owned you know, by the, the black vote or they, they need the black vote to win. So surely they're looking out for the homeless, poor blacks that need your uh, taxes to take care of their medical and their homeless needs and run food. So like, no, no, we're taking all of that away. So even when Democrats, their own self-interest is being destroyed, they're trying to give your money away of their voters and constituencies to strangers from another country. They're, we're going to hear later that they could be spies from Iran. They're picking up people on watch lists from Iran, military-aged men. They're going to start another Homeland, 9-11. We, we know this. He ain't lying, though. This is just ridiculous, man, by Mallorcas and Joe Biden. It's like they don't care. They are allowing this to happen. It obviously seems like Joe Biden and Mallorcas don't have a problem with illegal immigrants coming across the border. Y'all see my video the other day. It was just 7,500 people on a Sunday, on a Sunday, trying to get across the border. 7,500 people. In one day, and you got Joe Biden just sitting back, and Mallorca's them just, just just letting it be like they is is at the point now where it just seems like they don't care. They don't care. Just like he said, it can be a, a legal immigrants now just walking around. You wouldn't know Joe Biden them don't care. They could be somebody that's trying to hurt some people, and you just letting them across the border. This is just ridiculous. Now you heard what Mike Johnson just said. So they getting them papers ready. They getting ready to impeach. Mallorcas. Mallorcas should have been gone. He should have been gone. And I know, like I said, Mike Johnson's in the process of taking care of that now. Because now it's just getting out of control. It's getting out of control. If y'all seen, just like, look what Texas just had to do. Look what Texas just had to do. And then you got Joe Biden them just sitting back, allowing this crap to happen. It's like they give no care about it. And that's the reason why you see Mike Johnson going off the way that he is going off and showing you the numbers, uh, where the numbers was and where is it now, and is at the point of no return. So for us to fix this problem, Joe Biden has to go. He got to go. We got to get Joe Biden up out of here. Because I'm, I'm telling you now, that, that he just like somebody else, he put another country before us. He give all our money to this country. Joe Biden don't care about us. He don't care about America. He don't. Because that's where all the money and resources and stuff going to is another country. That is what he's worried about. He don't care about these uh, illegal immigrants coming across the border. He don't care. And that's the reason why, like I said before, Mike Johnson is going off. And I'm glad I am here to hear what he have to say. That's the reason why I took time out to say, you know what? I know this video 39 minutes, but damn it, I'm going to watch it. I want to see what's going on, and I want to see what Mike Johnson has to say. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, dive back to it. 
some of these kids are being trafficked for free labor and, and being forced to do things that are too appalling for us to articulate on. Oh, my God. I ain't even finna let that repeat. This mm -hmm. floor. Everybody here knows that's happening. Everybody here knows that's happening. And we're not demanding the president stop it. He can. He has the power to do it. Now, I don't know if they're going to get these people to vote. But if they ever did get these illegals to vote, it would offset about 33 of our states. It means the Democrats could win elections forever. I actually don't believe all these illegals would vote the way the Democrats want. Because when the illegals find out what they believe about the rainbow, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean, the illegals are not for that crap at all. It, I'll continue. In October 2021, the Biden administration revoked the migrant protection protocols that had been instituted under President Trump. That's the, the, the policy that we all know uh, colloquially as Remain in Mexico, right? The Remain in Mexico policy kept asylum seekers in a safe haven third country while they were seeking asylum in the United States. You know why that works so magically well? Because it sent a message around the world that you shouldn't pay your life savings to a cartel to traffic you through Mexico, Mexico and drop you over the U.S. border because you're not going to be dropped over the U.S. border. Hey, save your time and treasure and trouble. Don't take that dangerous journey because the word goes out on social media to countries all around the world, they're not going to let you in. Man, is that the most common sense rule you've ever thought of? The president doesn't agree. President Biden doesn't agree because he stopped it. He issued an executive order to stop that common sense rule. A senior Border Patrol officer told us on that trip to Eagle Pass that if the Biden administration, if President Biden, by the stroke of a pen, would issue an executive order today to just simply reinstate Remain in Mexico, they think that that would stop the flow by 70 percent, seven zero, one stroke of a pen by the president. He does not seem to care. If uh, the illegals find out what the Democrats stand exactly. for. Exactly. Joe Biden just don't care. Uh, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> this is ridiculous how this man is just allowing this stuff to happen. Like, I know he see this crap, but Joe Biden is just so stupid that he just can't comprehend what's going on. Him and Mallorcas, they know what's going on, but they don't care. On the life issue, given many of them are traditionally conservative Catholics, they're all, uh-uh, uh-uh. I told President Biden this myself on mm -hmm. multiple occasions, most recently a couple of weeks ago on the phone. I read him the law that says that he has all this authority, but he refuses to act. So the people coming up from the border are not evil in the way that American elites in our university and these tech centers are truly evil and like hold these positions. The people coming up from the border are largely just ignorant, uneducated people. Mm -hmm. I can keep going. September 2022, the Biden administration reversed a 2019 DHS public charge rule. What was that about? They began granting entry to aliens who we know will be a burden to taxpayers to receive immigration benefits. This matters because it's one of many instances in which the Biden administration is actively incentivizing illegals to come to the United States. We have sent, laid out the welcome mat. We told everybody around the world, come on, come on. You know what? The U.S. taxpayer will take care of you. You know how much it's costing you at home, the American people, all of our constituents? Billions and billions and billions of dollars to do what? To provide for people who are intentionally breaking our laws? Mm -hmm. Billions and billions of dollars to house them and educate them and clothe them and take care of them. Why should we bear that burden when they break our laws? That's what our constituents are asking. And more people are in this chamber need to be asking it as well. We're asking it on the House Republican side. We need our Democrat colleagues to join us. So the Democrats might get a little surprised if they ever do give the illegal the vote. And the moment that they vote the wrong way mm -hmm. is the day that the Democrats uh, hunt them and lock them up and mass deport them. Yep. Instead of threatening illegal aliens with deportation, we're rolling out the welcome mat. We're including aliens who will drain resources. You know what? Here's the other tragedy. The resources, those precious taxpayer dollars, are intended for and paid by American citizens. But when you drain those resources and you spend them on illegals from other countries, you cannot take care of your own. Yeah, Biden is too busy calling whites America's most dangerous supremacist. Mega, mega white shadow people who are in some kind of a magic invisible clan that none of us have ever seen but yet mm -hmm. it's they see it they keep finding 
what, there's 300 cosplayers that once marched in Charlotte, and that's supposed to represent America's greatest threat. When we've let in 300,000 people and we don't know their ideology, we know that at least 300 of them, that's more than the number of white supremacists I've Man. seen in America. And look, I'm a conservative evangelical on the right. So if anyone's going to see them, they ought to be all around and me. And then they even went as far to say that since Joe Biden has been in office, over 8 million illegal immigrants has crossed the border and Joe Biden has done nothing about it. Nothing. And he see the reason why everybody is pissed off, especially some of the people that was in Chicago talking about how the illegal immigrant was taking up the hotels and just appearing in their state and stuff like that. That stuff was pissing a lot of people off. And you got Joe Biden sitting there, him and Mallorcas, not trying to do anything about it. And that's why we are so upset. Like I said, right now, our country is in shambles because of this man. These mega, mega supremacists you know, that are white power or something. Guys, I think I've met three of them in my entire life. In my, I've met more violent uh, black, black Israeli, the black Israel ones that say kick out the Jews. I've met more uh, dangerous Muslims that said we should genocide the Jews. I'm just saying, wherever these white supremacists are, I'm sure they're there, okay? I've seen anti-Semites show up in my Twitter feed, three of them. They're psycho, okay? They're not common. And most recently, as President Biden has failed to exercise his constitutional obligation to police the border and protect Americans, now he's undermined Texas's ability to protect <laughs> its citizens, its huh. residents. You know, Texas has a constitutional authority to take care of its people. The first job of the government is to protect its citizens. Yep. And when Texas has acted to do that, the Biden administration and the president himself have intervened. They've taken them to court. They're cutting their razor wire. They're taking away the measures that the state of Texas has taken out of desperation to protect its own people. Right. I could go on and on and on about all this and the numbers and the actions, the 64 actions that we've documented that President Biden has specifically taken to open that border wide up. It is crystal clear his policy choices and Secretary Mayorkas' refusal to comply with the law are driving this border catastrophe. The Biden administration has replaced detain and deport with catch and release. Instead of order, they have chosen for us disorder and chaos. Rather than securing the homeland, they've ceded the homeland to cartels and traffickers. By the way, at the, at the Del Rio sector alone, at Eagle Pass, Texas, they told us the cartels are, are, they are estimated, uh, I think they said they're making $3.5 million a day mm. trafficking human beings into the country. Do the math. They're making over a billion dollars a year, bringing undocumented children, trafficked children, victims right into the country and, 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 and bringing them in. But Biden has targeted them as America's number one problem. And <laughs> meanwhile, we have guys coming from Iran. While we're in military conflict right. with Iran through uh, the Houthis who, that they're funding in is with Israel and Hamas. OK, so we're in conflict with guys and they can just go, look, we're sending up 300 people through your southern border and they're going to drive a monster truck through a children's playground on the same day is what we're going to. They could do the most evil thing known to man. And Biden's going to sit there and go, buh, buh, uh, uh, frazzum, frazzum, mag, mega, mega Republicans are going to corn pop the frazzum. Is that going to be good enough for you? Hmm. The House Judiciary Committee, where I served before I became Speaker, recently released a report showing that right now there are more than 617,000 aliens on ICE's non-detained docket, non-detained docket, who also have criminal convictions or pending criminal charges. That's right. You heard it right. That means that more than half a million known criminals, illegal aliens, are in the U.S., in our communities, free to reoffend and victimize American people. Yep. Blame Joe Biden because he don't care. All these criminals just being set free around normal people and Joe Biden just don't care. I, I mean, it, it's like at this point, man, we got to do something about this. We got to do something about this. And it, like I said before, it's going to start with getting rid of Mayorkas and it's going to start with getting rid of Joe Biden. I don't care what kind of switcheroo they might be trying to do because the way I feel about it, 
is that let's just say as it get closer and closer to re-election and Donald and Donald Trump don't know who he going against if Joe Biden going to drop out. Because Trump said he don't believe Joe Biden going to be running. They're going to try to do a little last-minute switcheroo. I feel like it don't really matter. I still feel like Donald Trump is going to win regardless of who the Democrats try to switch Joe Biden with. Because I feel like whatever policies that Joe Biden got, that next person that take his spot is going to have them same policies. So we pretty much dealing with the same person. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I don't care what they try to do over there. I still feel like Trump is going to win and our country will be right back on track where it's supposed to be. If if you vote for this guy, then you can answer all these questions yeah. because I didn't vote for him. Right. Okay, that's not an excuse because I still want to fight him. I want to undermine this party. We mock them. That's what the armor's for. We mock them with everything we have. I mock, uh, you know, they say, hey, Kamala Harris, she's Teflon. She's a black woman. I go, no, that doesn't work on me. I know an ignorant, stupid uh, woman who slept her way to the top when I see one. Same with Fannie Willis. Don't give me this, you're racist crap. I get it. I know there's such a thing as racism. And in this case, Kamala Harris, I'm calling her an idiot because she's an actual idiot. The president's actions are also creating a permanent underclass in our society. Here's another sad secondary effect of this, an underclass of non-citizens who receive many of the benefits of citizens, citizenship. He's inviting chaos and disorder within our land that is tearing at the very fabric of our society. The president can put a stop to this. President Biden and Secretary Mayorkas have designed this catastrophe. And now, rather than accept any accountability or responsibility for what they've clearly done, President Biden wants to somehow try to shift the blame to Congress for <laughs> his administration's catastrophe by design. It's absolutely laughable. No one's falling for this. Yeah, it is laughable. I remember he was trying to do that, trying to blame Republicans and stuff. It's their fault that this is happening. See, that's what they do. When they're to the blame for something, they try to find somebody else to put the blame on. This is just ridiculous. Joe Biden is ridiculous for trying to do something like that, as if we're going to fall for that. We ain't going to fall for that crap. Biden, he's a fellow rich white guy like me, right? He's supposed to be a Christian. He's a Catholic somewhere. So I should go easy on him, right? No, I'm going to call him. He's the Antichrist. If he is the Antichrist, he is the dumbest Antichrist yeah. anyone could ever imagine. The only thing that keeps Biden from actually being the Antichrist is he's such an effing moron. I'm going, the devil's got to find someone smarter than that. You know, Obama, maybe Clinton, maybe uh, certainly Gavin Newsom. He's from central ca casting of a Antichrist. Like if you were going to write up, have AI and you put in uh, the features of Antichrist, he has to mm -hmm. be slick, he has to be beautiful, he has to be convincing, he has to be popular, he has to be rich, he has to be connected, he has to be manipulative. It, it spits up images of Gavin Newsom. Mr. Speaker, I, I'd like to ask unanimous consent that the text of this letter be submitted into the congressional record. Without objection. In the letter, the signer said that America is facing a, quote, new and unfamiliar threat. As my colleagues know, you never want to hear our intelligence leaders speak about an unfamiliar threat. But these former FBI officials told us that we are suffering, quote, a soft invasion along our southern border. They're, they're stating what, it, what is obvious to all of us. They noted that we are experiencing a surge, listen to this, of military-aged single men who are pouring into our country over the southern border. From, from adversarial nations, by the way, and, and from terrorist regimes. Mm -hmm. When we were at Eagle Pass at the Del Rio sector in January, earlier January 3rd, with 64 House Republicans, they told us that between 60 to 70 percent of the people coming across the border right there at that epicenter are single adult males. They're military aged. These are not huddled masses of families seeking refuge and asylum. These are people coming into our country to do only God knows what. Yep. And we are allowing it. The Biden administration is allowing it. Yep. Exactly right. Biden is allowing it. They see the crap. They won't do nothing about it. Mallorca see it. I ain't trying to do nothing about it. I ain't trying to talk to the media about it. That's the reason why I just said I just feel like they okay with it. It's like as if they don't have a problem with it. It's like they are okay with illegal immigrants just coming across the border, uh, like the drugs, everything. It's like they are okay with it. It's like it don't bother them. It's like they care about themselves more than they care about the whole country, caring about everybody. 
and how we feel about this. And they just don't care. We don't need nobody in office that don't care. We need a president in office that cares. And, and, and we've noted that um, they're coming from adversarial nations, from terrorist re regions. We have no idea what, what they're planning. But in fiscal year 2023, Border Patrol encountered illegals from 170 different countries, mm. including hundreds from Iran, Syria, thousands from Russia, tens of thousands who have come in from China. Tell me that's not dangerous. In this letter, law enforcement and intelligence leaders are warning us that we may very well suffer a preventable terrorist attack here on the homeland if we don't immediately secure that border and remove these dangerous terrorists from inside our borders. Got to secure that House border, Republicans, man. House Republicans, of course, have acted. Last year, we passed the Secure the Border Act. This legislation would address the catastrophe. It would fix the asylum and parole processes that are so broken. It would support our Border, border Patrol agents. The Senate could take that bill up today. Chuck Schumer and the, and the Democrats in the Senate have been sitting on it in their majority for nine months. They could do it right now. They could vote on that and, and send it to the president's desk, but they won't. Why? Because they're apparently okay with all this as well. All is, fentanyl is so cheap to make that they use it to make fake ecstasy tablets out of fentanyl. The problem is if you take an ecstasy, I mean, you're taking a drug and it's terrible, but if it's cut with fentanyl, you die. And they don't care. They're going like, look, we're making illegal drugs. Why would we care if it was made of ecstasy or cut with fentanyl that might kill them? We're down at the border, cranking China's going, we don't care, we're manufacturing this stuff. I mean, fentanyl is the drug that poor people can get. It's mm -hmm. like a couple dollars a use. It only costs a quarter to make a tablet because it's a it's synthetic. It's a hundred times worse than heroin. And it's coming up through our border. And while there may be some who think that it's not a good time to act, I disagree. Good policy, like a strong border and securing our nation and defending our sovereignty is always good politics. It's the right thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. It's the constitutional thing to do. It's the common sense thing to do. And I cannot for the life of me understand why the president won't agree with that. I've asked him myself repeatedly, Mr. President, do something about it. And he hem haws and pretends that he doesn't understand what his authority is. He knows <laughs> what it is. To be sure, we're not going to agree to a fix that doesn't actually solve the problem. We would be derelict in our duty if we did that because we know what the problems are. We know how to fix them. And, and just like the border official told us on that trip to the Rio Grande, House Republicans are not here to supply more buckets. We are here to stop the flow. And stopping the flow is not rocket science. It takes political courage. It, it takes transformational policy changes that we know what policy changes will accomplish that. This is not conjecture. It's not Republican talking points. This is what the experts at the border, at the epicenter, tell us is necessary and needed. And it is insane that we will not supply it. We're also taking action this very week. Right now, we're doing this every day. I'd like to thank Representative Siskamani and McClintock and Moore for their hard work on very important bills uh, that, that the House is considering, even this week. These bills will hold foreign persons like criminal aliens accountable for their crimes and keep them out of our communities. One of, one of those bills is the Agent Raul Gonzalez Officer Safety Act, of course named for Border Patrol Agent Raul Gonzalez who died in the line of duty while pursuing a group of illegal aliens. It would provide stiffer penalties for aliens who attempted to evade arrest by the Border Patrol. We'll also consider a bill to ensure that aliens who are convicted of drunk driving are both deportable and inadmissible. Believe it or not, they're not currently. Okay, so this is New Orleans, Mike Johnson's uh, home city, which mm -hmm. is it's in New York, New Orleans. Ninety-five percent of the ODs are fentanyl. Those are black people. Those are blacks, and this is a white guy trying to stop it. And then there's Biden, who says if you don't vote for him, then you ain't black. That oh, yeah. is a legit black person will vote for the guy who is getting ninety-five percent of the homeless in New Orleans blacks killed with fentanyl. Is black a skin color? The, the third bill would provide stiffer penalties for illegal aliens who engage in social security identity theft. The fourth bill would ensure that aliens who have ties to Hamas and the Palestinian Liberation Organization will not be granted entry into the United States. These bills are obviously common sense measures to protect the American people. They should gain support right. of Republicans and Democrats, but my guess is not many Democrats will support it. 
The Republicans in the House will continue to press for secure borders to ensure America's immigration system serves the national interest mm -hmm. and does not benefit aliens who are a danger to our own people. Now, last Friday, President Biden came out in support of the Senate's deal, which we haven't seen yet. There's no text yet. But from what we've heard, this so-called deal does include, the, does not include, sorry, does not include, from we've, what we've heard, <laughs> these transformational policy changes that are needed to actually stop the border catastrophe. Among the reported details of the bill, again, I'm working off reports because I haven't seen the text, but apparently, reportedly, a new authority would be created in the law so the president can, quote, shut down the border once daily crossings exceed 5,000 a day. You, okay, right, right, you heard that right. Okay, so it is illegal to cross our border, but apparently we're concocting some sort of deal to allow the president to shut down the border after 5,000 people break the law. Why is it 5,000? If you add that up, that'd be a million more illegals into our country every year before we take remedial measures. It's madness. We should. Yeah, we that's should. crazy. You're going to wait that long to let that many come across, and then you want to try to say something. But like, come on, man. Oh, boy. We got to secure the border, man. And he said he didn't told Joe Biden. Ain't that sad when this man has constantly told Joe Biden, called him. He didn't went to the White House and in person and told this man. And Joe Biden still didn't do it. Obviously, he don't care. Mike Johnson had already told. See, that's the reason they don't like Mike Johnson, because he come with the facts. That's the reason why I respect Mike Johnson. I like what he do, and I'm glad he was voted in as the new speaker. Because ever since he knew, he done been the new speaker, he ain't been holding back at all. And he been coming on that mic and telling us exactly what we need to hear. You should be asking what kind of enforcement authority kicks in at 5,000 illegal crossings a day. The number should be zero. Zero. And I don't care what congressional district you go into in America, pull up people at random on the street and ask them, hey, should we allow 5,000 people to break our law each day to get a million into the country, or should we stop it at zero and enforce our law? Exactly. It's, it's, it's stop at zero and enforce the law. This. It's madness. Anything higher is simply surrender. Anything higher than zero is surrendering our border, surrendering our sovereignty and our security. And it's important to point out, and I want to make this very clear, the president's statement on Friday, he falsely claimed, it was a false claim, that he needs Congress to pass a new law to allow him to close the southern border. After a while, you start to realize, like, when, when Democrats say black, remember Clinton, Clinton, Bill Clinton said he was the first black president, okay? That when Democrats use the word black, they don't mean the skin color, because they'll all say, like, Clarence Thomas, he's actually a white guy. And Thomas Sowell, he's a white guy. And Larry Elder, he's a white guy. Anyone they disagree with who's black is actually a white guy. And meanwhile, a white guy like Joe Biden says, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Yeah. So, and yeah, Bill Clinton, first black president, though he has white skin, whiter than my butt. You're being brainwashed. Don't be dumb. Elections have consequences. I'm just trying to keep America from committing suicide the way Europe already has. He knows that's not true. The president has been around Washington a long time, okay? And the president repeated his claim yesterday on the White House lawn. He said, quote, I've done all I can do. Just give me the power I've asked for. Moments after his comments, the president's own spokeswoman contradicted him and said, quote, there are things that are within his power to secure the border. Well, hello, of course there are. Yeah. The law is very clear. Anybody can Google this. Any American citizen could just pull this up and read it for themselves. Let's set the record straight. What he said is demonstrably false. I've explained to him specifically. I read the President of the United States the law, the black letter law, on the phone about two and a half weeks ago. I said, Mr. President, it says very clearly, you have all the tools and the executive authority necessary to reverse the catastrophe that you have created. He has those tools right now, and he has since day one. Yeah. The Immigration and Nationality Act, for example, coupled with, coupled with recent Supreme Court precedent, give the president, quote, ample authority to suspend the entry of all aliens or any class of aliens or impose any restrictions he may deem appropriate. That's the broadest authority that Congress probably has ever given a president. And it's been there for a long, long time. In fact, the very provision that I just read you was used by the Obama administration mm. more than 19 times. It's been used, I think, 69 times by presidents since 1980. 
but not by President Biden. He, he pretends it's not there. Any attempt by this president to pretend that Dementia. he's a bystander bereft of any ability to secure the border is patently absurd. And we're going to continue to remind the American people of that. Uh, this is about helping the Republicans uh, impeach Mayorkas. Personally, I think they're going after Mayorkas and they should be going after Biden because Biden's the boss. He's the main one in trouble. I don't get why they're not spending more time trying to get Biden. Maybe they think Mayorkas is going to be a safer hit, but mm -hmm. they have to impeach this guy. They're not going to get support from any Democrats anywhere. Democrats uh, want to give a, give all of your money away to illegals, including your retirement. They want to release them as drunk drivers. No law applies to them. And mm. uh, Pretty system. much that's what it seemed like. If we take a step back and we consider the current catastrophe at the border, we can all see that our country is at a critical decision point. We are at a moment where we have to decide right now as a Congress, as a people, we have to decide as the American people if we have borders or not. We have to decide if we believe in the rule of law or not. We have to decide if we're a sovereign nation or we're not. House Republicans do believe that America has borders and that we are a sovereign nation. We believe we must set limits on the number of immigrants who enter, obviously, and the American people have a say on immigration policy. Understanding who enters and enforcing our immigration laws are critical components to maintain a sovereign country. If you do not have sovereignty, you do not have a country. Yeah. I also believe that border security is part of our solemn obligation to safeguard the well-being of our citizens and uphold the principles that define who we are as a nation. In no sense is border security somehow an act of hostility to neighboring countries. It's exactly the opposite because a weak border weakens America and a strong border is good for America, and a stronger America is good for everybody around the world, and everybody in this chamber should acknowledge that. And just as we lock our doors at night to protect our homes, we secure our borders to protect our homeland. And my friends, that is our sacred obligation. We in the House Republican Conference desperately want to protect our homeland because we want mm -hmm. to ensure that all of our children and grandchildren can continue to enjoy the blessings of liberty that we have enjoyed and that we have loved and experienced. And, and we can continue this grand experiment in self-governance that we began in 1776. But here's the question, I'll leave you with this. Does President Biden want that? Does President Biden believe in the rule of law? Does President Biden hmm. believe that we're a sovereign nation? Does he believe that Americans and not those from other countries should be put first? Every American citizen should be asking these questions of the president yep. and helping us demand his answers. We won't stop. We're going to continue. And with that, I yield back. Pass this link around to the show. This show has been one of the longest ones I've made. I just really like what Mike Johnson says. I'm a big fan of his. Me too. Um, so we just put on our armor and we're letting it rip. Uh, get your cardboard armor ready because November's coming. And the Democrats, when they find out Trump wins, they are going to violently revolt. I'm Show sure Liz. Wow, that was a long one now. Uh, I don't know. I think, uh, well, you know, I done did a few long videos. I don't do them often, but if it's something that I really, really want to check out, then I definitely would check it out regardless of how long it is, you know, uh, the video is. But, man, Joe Biden is destroying our country. Mallorcas needs to be gone. Obviously, they don't care about us. They don't care. As you can see in this video, how Mike Johnson just broke this down about he been constantly telling Joe Biden, Joe, you need to do this. You need to do that. He even read it out to him and he still didn't do it. So now obviously you can see is that he, uh, speaker Mike Johnson said that they are working on an uh, impeachment. They're working on the papers now to get Mallorca's up out of there. They don't want to secure the border. They want to keep letting the legal immigrants come through. And he said, you know what? You don't want to do anything about it. And we can't constantly keep letting this happen. Because you got to think about it. Since Joe been in there, they said been over 8 million illegal immigrants that came across the border. That is not good at all. And then, like I said, I'm pretty sure a lot of you seen it. 
We seen what's going on in Texas and them putting up more barbed wire and stuff like that. And then we went as far as seeing almost 7,500 people uh, tried to cross the border on a Sunday. 7,500. That's in one day. I'm like, golly. And what do Joe Biden do? Absolutely nothing. But like I said, this video already been long. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section. Shout out to the one that did stay to the end. I know this is a very long video. I'm pretty sure a lot of people probably didn't make it to the end. But if you did, please leave me a comment down below saying that you did. Thank you all so much. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.